Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the second half issues Arsenal experienced in their 3-1 win over Man United. So in today's video, first we're going to focus on Arsenal's shape in the second half, then we'll look to United's improvement following that, and we'll focus on United's personnel substitutions that Ten Hag was able to make. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, first we're going to focus on United building out of the back. In the opening half, Arsenal did a very good job of ensuring that they applied pressure to that United backline, and we saw different variations of how they were pressing with Havertz helping out in Ketia and at times Odegaard helping out in Ketia with Saka tucking in to provide numbers in that midfield zone. But what ended up happening in that second half was that rather than having Casemiro simply dropping between the center backs or Eriksen joining the back three, now Onana was a bit more aggressive with his positioning and he was forming the back three with Lindelof and Martinez. And there were times where you would have Casemiro or Eriksen dropping off deeper but for the most part, it was Casemiro holding his midfield position in the pivot. And there would be times where Ericsson would drop in towards the back line. And if not, they would still have 4v3 at the back with the fullbacks pushing forward. And now Arsenal had a problem because even though they had Havertz, Udegaard, and Nketiah pressing, there still was a spare man for United to play around. So what ended up happening was that now you ended up seeing more aggression from the center backs pushing forward. And in the early stages of that second half, United fairly did a good job of getting beyond that Arsenal front three press and then they were able to get the center backs to push forward to play in towards the midfield zone. Initially we witnessed Lindelof stepping forward and he was able to play the ball in towards Anthony who dropped off deeper in a narrow position and in the build up to one of United's best chances from open play it stemmed with Nketiah stepping towards Onana and Onana simply playing the ball around him for Martinez and that ended up seeing Martinez pushing forward near the halfway line and pulling Odegaard towards him before he played the ball in towards Ericsson, which ultimately led to a rashford Ericsson combination. And from there, Ericsson was able to find Bruno in a pocket of space in the midfield zone. He was able to take a touch and then play the ball around Rice for Martial making a run between the center backs as Rashford did a good job of pulling out Saliba. And from there, Martial was forced into a tough shot from a tight angle and Ramsdale pushed it into the path of Rashford who had his rebound blocked for a corner. In terms of Arsenal in possession, ultimately one of their biggest issues that they encountered was their shape as they varied between the 4-1-5 and the 3-2-5. One of the issues with the 4-1-5 was that it put a lot of emphasis on Rice to progress play from that center of the pitch and United were doing a very good job of dropping off to two banks of four and providing pressure towards Rice between Bruno and Martial and even when Zinchenko was in that midfield zone in the 3-2-5 his impact was limited in that second half to progress play as they did a very good job of closing down the two deepest midfielders. There were times where Zinchenko pushed out towards the touchline zone and Havertz was dropping off deeper. In the first half, Havertz was dropping off deeper to make it a 3-2-5 and dragging away Casemiro, and that played a factor in the build-up to Arsenal's equalizer. But here, Havertz was now receiving the ball on the outside of Antony, given the fact that he was tucking in narrow to help out Martial and Bruno in the opening half. And from there, Havertz was able to get on the ball freely, but Arsenal didn't really construct anything significant down that left-hand side through the movement of Zinchenko and Havertz and Martinelli in the second half and the final third. That is ultimately why perhaps Arteta wanted to move to a 4-1-5 with Zinchenko pushing forward down that left-hand side. It would provide Martinelli some help against Juan Basaka, who did a very good job against him. But there were spells in that second half where you had both Zinchenko and White pushing forward higher up the pitch, with White looking to make overlapping runs around Saka, or simply looking to join the attack to provide some rotation down the right-hand side with Odegaard and Saka. And leaving Rice in that central area with Gabriel and Saliba now being forced to push forward to join the attack. The issue with White pushing forward to join Odegaard and Saka was that if Arsenal lost possession in the final third, there would be ample space for Rashford to break into in transition and we witnessed that in the build-up to United's opener. And throughout that second half, one of the issues that Arsenal encountered was that if a centre-back was pushing forward or Rice was caught in that midfield zone, both full-backs were pushed higher up the pitch and there was ample space for Rashford to serve as an outlet to counter on a consistent basis. Therefore, in the early stages of that second half, there was a big worry that with the fullbacks pushing forward and Rice in the final third, if United could simply win possession, there was always an out ball beyond Rice into the space between the channels with Martial dropping off deeper to receive the ball and Rashford looking to break down the left channel in space behind White, who was often caught in the final third. And ultimately, one of the biggest issues for United was simply the fact that they were able to get into good positions, but just making the wrong decisions when Rashford was able to 
to break in towards those zones. In the same breath, Saliba was looking to progress the play, but there were a few occasions where he stepped in towards that midfield zone and played a sloppy pass that fortunately for Arsenal fans didn't result in a United break. And later on in that second half, you witness Saliba carrying the ball in towards United's third. He has a loose touch and Ericsson steps in to win the ball and focus on White's positioning. He's looking towards his own goal and Rashford's looking to break into the space down the left channel. Ericsson plays him free down that zone and now it could create a 1v1 as Gabriel's looking to shift across. You have Hoyland and Anthony breaking towards the back post and they create an overload against Tomiyasu. Here Rashford should clip the ball towards the back post to maximize the overload against Tomiyasu but he attempts to cut across Gabriel and the recovering white and he creates a 1v3 for himself and he ultimately fires a tame effort on goal that's blocked into the path of Ramsdale. Ultimately as United got deeper throughout that second half the United midfield deserve credit for doing a very good job in that zone and not being outnumbered or overpowered by the Arsenal midfielders. Each midfielder in Casemiro, Bruno, and Eriksen deserve credit for winning individual battles, and then quickly looking to spring their attacking players out and towards the channels. Eriksen in particular did a very good job against Odegaard, and there were times where he was able to win possession against Odegaard, and then even himself was looking to break beyond the Arsenal captain to join the counter-attack down the left-hand side. If you look to an example, there's a time where Rice slid the ball across Rashford for Odegaard ahead of the penalty area. Ericsson did a very good job of sticking with Odegaard and putting in a challenge and then eventually poking the ball away from Odegaard to ignite Martial down that left-hand side. From there with White caught higher up the pitch, again he's facing his own goal and Martial and Rashford are able to play around Rice and then allow Martial to break free down the left channel. And here Rashford carries the ball into the final third against Saliba and as he slows down the play he could quickly play the ball towards Bruno breaking towards Gabriel but he gives Gabriel enough time to anticipate that pass and when he attempts to play into the path of Bruno not only is the pass unsuccessful but he gave Gabriel enough time to anticipate the pass and properly position himself to step in to win possession. Ten Hag's decision to bring on Hoyland for Martial provided a new element of attack for United. He did a very good job of wrestling with the Arsenal center backs and making timely runs in towards the channels and it presented a new threat of attack for United as well. Arsenal center backs were no longer easily winning aerial duels against Martial and with Hoyland Arsenal were now facing issues by simply United throwing the ball in towards that zone. In the first example, it's Hoyland holding back Gabriel and Bruno making a run from his own half, breaking off Zinchenko and Rice to receive the ball beyond Hoyland. And from there, he was able to get the ball beyond Rice and slide the ball out towards Rashford. And that placed Rashford in a 1v1 with White. From there, you witness the overload against Zinchenko and Rashford should be looking to pick out Hoyland or Anthony at the back post. But with Udergaard recovering, he slows down the attack once again, and his attempt to break to the byline ultimately wins a corner for United rather than creating a chance for Hoyland or Anthony. And then minutes later, it's Hoyland once again backing into Gabriel. Rice looks to help out Gabriel and leaves Bruno free. And as Hoyland drags Rice towards him with Gabriel, he nods the ball into the path of Bruno, who gets to the loose ball before Fabio Vieira, switches the ball out towards Rashford, and once again, he's in a 1v1 with White. From here, what you end up seeing is that he slows down the play. There are markers breaking in towards the box, but he has a 1v3 where he should be playing the ball back to Delo, and Odegaard ends up reacting towards that, and he could pick out a late Bruno run towards the 6-yard area, but he ends up attempting to take on Saka and White, and he loses out and the ball rolls to Ramsdale. So where Hoyland was capable of showing his threat with his back to goal, he also showed it with his ability to run the channels, and with minutes remaining in normal time, you witness Declan Rice looking to carry the ball beyond Garnacho, and as he carries into the final third, he has a bit of a heavy touch. Casemiro steps in and leaves Fabio Vieira. He wins the ball and now you have Tomiyasu caught higher up the pitch in the midfield zone and Hoyland ends up making a run off of Gabriel's shoulder and you could see that there's a lot of space for Casemiro to play the ball in towards Hoyland making the run off of Gabriel. From there he's free to carry the ball in towards the penalty area. He's in a 1v1 against Gabriel and that's where you see his confidence to take the ball across Gabriel and attempt to use his strength to get into a shooting position but unfortunately for the striker Gabriel makes a last ditch tackle and Saliba is able to clean up. The second substitution that United weren't forced to make was bringing on Garnacho for Anthony and that provided more pace in the wider area but also a threat in behind. But here in the build up to that opportunity it was Gabriel Jesus receiving the ball in the midfield zone, Bruno tracking back to win possession and that's where you see both fullbacks caught higher up the pitch. Eriksen can now play the ball to Bruno freely in that midfield zone and from there focus on Garnacho. Once again if you focus on White's positioning he's facing his his own goal and from there once Bruno receives the 
ball. He's playing it towards Hoyland, who's facing the center backs. But Hoyland does a very good job of receiving it with his back to goal and reacting immediately. He back heals it into the path of Casmiro joining the attack. And that's where you see Garnacho making the run off Rice, who dropped in towards the back line. And from there, what ends up happening is that Casmiro slides the ball across Rice, stepping for Garnacho, making the run between White and Gabriel, placing him in a position to finish beyond Ramsdale. But unfortunately for United, he slightly ran offside. So as you can see, despite Arsenal successfully claiming maximum points to keep pace with Man City, Ten Hag's United consistently created tactical issues for Arteta that fortunately for Arsenal fans failed to prove costly.